we introduced the state equation and the observation equation for a common filter in our previous lecture. Now we're going to look at these quantities a little bit more closely and introduce some notation that will make developing the common filter a little bit more straightforward. We'll start at a simple spot, the observation noise, V. V has a autocorrelation matrix, uh, QV, and we assume that the vectors, uh, the V vectors, are uncorrelated and zero mean. So in effect, what that means is that while the vector V may have internal correlations, in other words, the third element may be correlated with the fourth element, they are not correlated from time to time. Hence, the delta uh, n minus k in the expression below. So what does it mean to be uncorrelated uh, from time to time but have internal correlations? That means that the Q matrix is not necessarily the identity matrix. So Q will be some symmetric matrix and positive definite or positive semi-definite. In this case, we've been assuming, and I will continue assuming, that we're dealing with real signals. Uh, if we're dealing with complex signals, usually it just involves replacing the T with an H. We're going to have similar assumptions for our matrix, or our vector W. W is what we call the process noise. So you may be asking, it seems like we're making a lot of really strong assumptions. How often do you truly see white noise? And the answer is, you're right. We don't often see white noise, and yet we're making that assumption here. So how do we take care of that? Well, it turns out that we can generate non-white noise by taking white noise and putting it through some LTI system, some filter. If we do that, then what we end up doing is we have a white noise excitation, W or V, and then we have noise states also in our state uh, equation. And these noise states are filtered, perhaps with an autoregressive process. It makes now our state equation our, our state vector much larger to have these noise states in there. But then we can pick off whatever uh, filtered noise we want and throw it in as the observation noise or as the um, uh, process noise. In order to do that though, we need to make one update to the equation up above. And that is, we're going to add a last vector D. So we now have the matrices, or last matrix D. A, B, C, D. I don't know why people chose that, but uh, not very creative, but it's commonly used. And so finding a common notation among different uh, treatises on a subject is always useful, so we'll stick with that. Okay, so we have the same type of situation for W. And now that we have W and V defined, we can also note that the expected value of V times W transpose is going to be zero for all possible shifts. So since they're zero mean, this implies that they're uncorrelated. Now let's talk about some notational things that will make developing the common filter a little bit easier to follow. When we developed the RLS filter, we had the a priori error 
and the a posteriori error. The a priori error was the error due to filtering the current input with the previous weights. And the a posteriori error was the error due to filtering the current input with the updated weights, or the current weights. We're going to have many uh, concepts like this with the Kalman filter. And instead of defining new quantities, which would uh, explode the number of variables that we need, we're going to introduce this idea. Namely, we're going to let x hat of n given i be the unbiased minimum mean squared error, or mean squared estimate, of x of n at time n given all measurements or observations up to and including time i. This gets to be a mouthful. So we're going to call that MMSE. It's a common phrase, so you'll see this in other works. Now that we've defined x in that way, we can do the same thing for other variables. And in particular, we'll let uh, E of n given i be the corresponding state estimation error. OK, so now we've defined most of the quantities seen here. We've discussed what happens with w and v. And our estimate x at different times, and of course x is defined in and of itself, and y is just an observation, so we don't need special notation for that. But we are going to define another quantity that will be very useful. The common filter also uses this idea of a matrix P, but it's used differently than in the RLS filter. In the RLS filter, we used P to denote the estimate of the inverse of uh, the autocorrelation matrix. And in this case, we're going to use P to be actually our estimated autocorrelation matrix. We need more letters in the alphabet if we wanted to keep everything completely independent of each other, but we can't. And I use the term autocorrelation. I probably should have used the term covariance. It's covariance because we aren't uh, looking at the expected value of e at different points in time, but rather the e vector at a single point in time. And so it's the variance, the covariance, of the um, values uh, within the vector e. And it's a covariance matrix and not just a correlation matrix, because we assume that it's zero mean. And so those two will be the same. OK, now that we've defined a lot of quantities, our goal is going to be to minimize the mean squared error e n given n. So this is minimize the error given all the observations up to time n at time n. We can write this in several ways. And this particular uh, notation or uh, transformation is really useful. So the norm of e n given n squared is going to be the sum of the squares of each 
of the elements in E. Well, that actually shows up in P, our covariance matrix, along the diagonal. So if we take the, the trace uh, of P of n, it's exactly equal to the expected value of the norm of E n squared. And that's simply equal to sum from k equals 0 to, if we have a pth order, p minus 1, of E k, that's the kth element of our vector E, squared like that. Well, we're going to spend some time developing this. But first, I thought I'd give you a little spoiler just to keep it interesting. And that is, we have a nice, simple equation that implements our common filter. That is the x of n given n, x hat, so our estimate is equal to a n given n minus 1 times our previous estimate n minus 1 given n minus 1 so that's our previous estimate of the state up to the last time times or plus k times the error in our observation. Now, this is our, we don't really know the error in the observation, but what we do know is the error based on um, the true observation minus what we thought we were going to get. So what did we think we were going to get? We thought we were going to get our previous estimate of the state updated to a current estimate of the state times the observation matrix C and then we subtract that from our real one. That tells us how far we were off. This K is called the Kalman uh, gain and everything else here we kind of know we have some recursive equation on x and we don't have an initial estimate of x yet and we also don't have the common gain. So the common gain is going to be uh, a very important part in what's going to come out of our derivation. So to recap, that quantity a n comma n minus 1 times x hat uh, n minus 1 given n minus 1 is our estimated x at time n given the observations up to time n minus 1. So then this is our estimated or predicted observation. And then what's in the brackets is the error based on our the difference between our actual observation and our predicted observation. This updates our state estimate. And as discussed, this is our common gain. And it transforms the observation error into a correction of the state estimate. It has a role similar to the mu that we've used before in our uh, adaptive filter updates. But the common gain is um, actually uh, not a scalar. And it's doing something slightly different. But we'll get there as we go. And before we uh, finish this up, let's go ahead and make a few notes just to keep track of what everything is. 
this is going to be a p by 1 column vector. c is going to be an m by p measurement matrix. v, uh, we'll get to v in just a minute. Uh, a is going to be a p by p matrix. The common gain is going to be a p by m matrix. This is going to be an m by 1 vector. And then we have d times v. This is going to be m by 1 noise vector. And then we have b times w. And that's going to be p by 1. Okay, we'll continue with our development. Next time, we'll figure out where to get this K from.